Welcome back to another Logic Pro X tutorial, guys. This is how to use EQ for beginners. We're going to come at it like we don't have any experience with EQ. Video sections, we're going to cover what is EQ, why you should use it, and then how to use it, and we'll run through a live example. By the way, this song that um, we're working on right here, doing a bit of an EQ, is also available for sale to sing over it and release on Spotify if you want some beats or songs to release. Section one, EQ stands for equalization, and it just basically means that you can add or take away certain types of frequencies in your track. So for example, if you have a vocal track or a piano track and you don't really like some of the frequencies, maybe there's too much buzz in the low end or there's too much hissing in the high end, we can also do things like bump up if we want more high end or we want to make your sound voice sound more bright we can uh, increase the high end or if we want to make your voice sound more full we can increase the low end so that's how we that's what eq is next section of the video how to use eq how do you start from scratch let's dive into this logic session of a song that i'm working on right now I'm just going to focus on this track here where it says main keys and uh for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna move it up to the top just so everyone can see it. Um, I'm gonna focus on the keys track because piano usually has many frequencies in the track from low end to high end, all, all covering all the types of frequencies. So how to add EQ from scratch, we will go to the inspector window on the track level and in Logic, EQ is, as I said, it's really popular to have on every track. So Logic makes it really easy. You can just click on this little box here that says EQ and that's gonna pop open the EQ native plugin that Logic gives us. So let's listen to it solo right now, and as when I play it, you'll see the um, frequencies actually popping up here because we're on Post Analyzer. Um, when we are on Post Analyzer here, we'll be able to see the frequencies actually coming up from the piano, and that's really, really helpful. Okay, so here are the frequencies to give you an idea of what the frequencies are and where they are, like what does 20 hertz mean, what does 20K, what does this one to 2K range mean? Let's, we can um, just click one of these bands here. Let's click this 2K band, we'll click it on, and then we can click this dot and drop it down. So that means we will be decreasing the frequencies at 2K here, and then if we go above, that means we are raising the frequencies at 2K. And also these frequencies here, it's creating this kind of um, oval shape for us. So if we don't want that, we can always bring that in and only take out the frequencies right at 2K, or sorry, increase those frequencies, or if we wanna take them out at 2K, we drop them down. Play our piano and then we'll start taking away frequencies and we'll start adding frequencies so you can hear what the difference is. So it's very more muffled here because we're taking out a lot of this 2K range. Watch what happens when I increase it. Lots more high end, lots more air. Let's, let's do 1K. Still muffled. Let's say, um, let's go back to 2K and we just wanna take out a little bit. I'll show you what that sounds like. Just taking up this frequency right here, you can see, you can almost see it. You can see that little waveform coming up. I'm gonna cut it. It's a very, very slight difference. It's really hard to hear that. You can also be um, using these um, kind of sliders here where it says negative six dB. That's how low we wanna cut it. And then we can also raise it by dragging our mouse. And then this band here is like the shape. So we might have a wide, point zero one is wide, and then we can drag to get that low kind of shape. And then these are the hertz. So you can put the band over here, you can put the band over here, it doesn't matter. And if we don't want that EQ at all, we just click it off. So typically you would like to, um, a very common EQ is to take out a lot of the low end because you know we are barely even here 
this these frequencies anyways like our human ear it's very hard to catch that so it's good to just cut that out so if you are listening to the song you're making on a huge set of speakers it's not buzzing there so we'll do that now with our piano and uh, the best way to learn how to do this eq is by going overboard to seeing what actually happens when you're making the change and then scaling back a bit Obviously a piano one like that wouldn't sound good. So let's find the sweet spot. So I, I like it there. Um, you can see I'm cutting a bit of the, the low end here, just like a little bit. And I'm doing that because I know I'm going to have a bass track in this song. So I know that the bass is going to cover all this low end for me. And so I don't need that low end in the piano. I want it to be present a little bit, but I don't need it there because the bass is going to be covering it. And that's what, why you have EQ on every track most of the time is because when you're mixing, you want to make sure like every instrument has their place in the, in the EQ window you know that if your bass is here well make sure you don't have a lot of piano frequencies in there as well so not everything is clashing together obviously there's going to be overlap in things um, that's that's normal but you can shape the your tracks and the EQ on your tracks to make sure that things have their own place you'll notice the bands at the top here we have a different um, three different icons we have these kind of um, diamond bands and then on the edges here we have these shelves and then on the ends here we have the cuts. So the cuts are look like that, where we only can um, really kind of have, a, have a, a cut and we can kind of extend what that knee would look like. And then we have the same thing with the high cut. A shelf is, is um, basically a slope like that, kind of like a low cut, basically just offering a shelf um, to cut things or to raise things in context uh, of this intro here. So let's do that. That sounds, that sounds fine to me. The best way to start if you're just starting with EQ is to um, use the presets that Logic gives you in EQ. So open up your EQ and go um, to the presets here where you have drums, keyboards, guitar, all these presets where if you're trying to EQ your guitar and you have an acoustic guitar, just open up the acoustic guitar EQ preset and you'll see what Logic gives you as a shape so they've cut some low in here they've raised around two three two about 2.5k with a bit of sh with a bit of a shelf and the to get some air very simple shape you can see keyboards like a, a grand piano eq1 very t hardly taking out any low end nice boots here so very simple the, i would use that as your starting point to learn the different shapes of eqs and then go in and like play with things see what's you don't like and whatnot. Just let me know if you have any questions. I do answer all of them in the comments. Happy to help. Feel free to check some of my own music out. Um, love to know what you think and hope to see you in the next video.